We are super happy to have you here. I do like a lot of aggression in dance music. You know, obviously dance music works really well if it has a lot of energy. And I find that if you use aggression to provide the energy, it's what I love. Also, just really love dark music because it's quite almost scary in a way, and it's what I look for in a lot of techno music: aggressive, intense, paranoid techno. I suppose. I don't know. What do you think, Megan? I don't mind it, but when it's late at night, I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Milan last time? Yeah, Milan last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is who we're going to see at Rocket in like two or three hours. Yeah, this yeah. Oh my god. Nice to meet you. Nice Who's to there? meet you. We're gonna go see nice you. Nice to meet you again. You're playing at Rocket, right? Yeah, yeah. What can we see? Oh, to see oh, you. Nice. It's two hours. Oh, great. <laughs> you can play the piano, by the way, if you want to. It's cool. Things really started to kick off around the time when Lofa played my track Boss on Rinse FM. And then from Lofa playing it, I then got the recognition from Marianne Hobbs. God, it's really nice to see you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, when did we last run into each other? It, it was, was uh, that James Blake It was James gig. Blake's gig, wasn't yeah, it, in yeah. Manchester? Yeah. The first time I ever came across to me as music was listening to a rip of Lofa's show. Um, it was just a little tiny rip of a little tune called Boss by Samia, and it completely blew me away. I couldn't believe it. I just thought, this is the most remarkable thing that I've heard in as long as I can remember. I love this section. Avon drum doom experimental. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't lose with this. There's so much stuff. I was listening to that on the bus on the way down. Oh yeah. 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 The reason that it resonated with me so deeply was that he had seemed to capture something of the spirit and the energy and the texture of early dubstep and completely reinterpreted it for a new generation. I contacted him and uh, got a copy of the tune, played it on XFM, and it just felt like the entire world blew up in that moment. Marion Hobbs got in touch with me, um, I think sending me Fortet's email, saying something along like he wants to talk to you about something. So obviously I was then like, shit, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> you know, that's really excited. Then I, uh, I got in touch every email and it was literally just like, straight away, can you do this remix for me? Obviously I was like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember actually, because I was so excited, I got the remix done in like two days. It was just like a pure buzz. A lot of inspiration. And I was looking at um, a series of Facebook posts, uh, underneath which was a message from Samir himself as Happer. Somebody had made a comment about the fact that he was only 15 years old when he made the track, and he'd written underneath, no, actually, I was 14. And I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, this kid can't be 14 years old. That's outrageous, you know?
I'm not sure whether it's just my mum being like protective or whether it's actually a legal thing. Um, but at the moment I have to go with someone whether it is mum or dad or brother or sister. Because I am under 18 they could easily just be like no, you can't do it you know. So I'm, I have to be, you know, I am really thankful for the fact that they let me do it and they're really, really supportive with it all. I think it's weird for you that kind of the first, your first experience of that kind of, you know, clubs and things like that is from that perspective of playing. Yeah, yeah. I suppose you could say it's strange to be put straight into that part of a night out as opposed to like Tiger Tiger. You know, fire in London. They wouldn't let me in at one point. They had to go talk to the manager and apparently the manager didn't realise how, like, my age. And the promoter had to talk to them and clear it up with them, so they wouldn't let us in at first. I think it was Sam's third gig ever in London at Corsica Studios, and he, it was on his 15th birthday. His brother and his sister and myself, we all went down, and his sister was dancing with his brother and myself. And she's like, Mum, this is just... She said, this is not real. She said, not only I mean, am I in a club in London, and my baby brother's the DJ, and my mum's here. She's like, this is just so weird. It's weird on every level. I always get a lot of drunk people coming up being like, oh, how old is he? You know, that kind of thing. I try not to make a big deal out of the age thing because I don't think it is a big deal because I don't think it matters that much how old you are. I think it's more about whether the music's good or not. I started making music was because I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease about when I was about 13 and I ended up just being sat at home not at school with like nothing to do and I'd heard of um, I think it was FL Studio from my brother and I got hooked if it wasn't for that I don't think I would have been making music today I told you know I could have been doing something completely different it's technically uncurable at the moment. Basically every form of medication or diet is just kind of pushing it to the side and leaving it away. You know, it never really gets rid of it completely. I know that it's been a very serious part of his rehabilitation, you know, his interest in music. And I, I, judging by his mother's correspondence with me, I think he was completely immersed in that world. Uh, I assume a digital world, probably online. And that's how he came across all these sounds that were influencing him at such an early age. Uh, I'm one of the DJs. When it comes to touring, it can be kind of, I wouldn't say dangerous, but like if I miss out on too much sleep, for example, and um, I get ill, that can, can be quite dangerous because Crohn's is an autoimmune disease. So if my immune system then starts working extra hard to stop the illness, basically I'll start attacking myself in a way because that's how the, the disease works. So I need to make sure I sleep enough and not become ill. Are you an artist? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I'm on first. Which one are you? Hopper. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are a fan. Oh, nice to meet you. I think the most important element for an artist like Samir is longevity. And in spite of the fact that he blew a massive, great big black hole in the industry with that first little tune, Boss, ultimately you would like to see a career arc for him that's 20, 30, 40 years deep, you know. And in years to come, I don't know, maybe he'll develop an extraordinary live show. He'll be up on stage at Coachella Festival headlining in a few years from now. That would be wonderful to see.